4th of June 2023. On Facebook today was a front page of a newspaper announcing that the Church of England, the Anglicans, are wanting to debate about the Almighty God, whether to call him he. And of course, I've mentioned this recently about how certain certain denominational groups, including the traditional institutional church groups that have been around for centuries, but certain denominational groups, including the liberal wing of the so-called Christian church, they already are sanitizing the name of God to take out, quotes, the maleness of God. And of course, we know that God is God, the uncreated creator who created male and female. So in that sense, our creator God is way above creation. Way above creation, our creator God is God the uncreated creator. And in that sense, God is above maleness and femaleness. But, for very good reason, the Bible has been written. It is the revealed letter from God to us mankind through different people, different generations, but of course, we know that all scripture is God breathed. And we're talking about the recognized canon of scripture and not any other books that are trying to be introduced by various people in recent times. And I'm not even going to mention the books that are not in the canon of scripture. So the canon of scripture is there. All scripture is God-breathed and useful for encouragement, edification, exhortation, warning, rebuke, correction. And God hasn't changed. God will not change. And the Bible is written and it will not change. It's man who misinterprets the Bible in every generation, and man does what man wants to do, ultimately. So the Bible is there. It is written. And that very phrase is used both by Jesus and the devil, then and now. And this, why, this is why it's also written that God has told us, <clears throat> commanded us, eagerly desire Holy Spirit gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. And then all the other eight gifts work alongside prophecy to enable us to understand to increase with knowledge, wisdom, teaching, and we're talking about prophecy, which is God speaking to us directly, in the sense of Jesus saying, my sheep hear my voice, and that means the voice of God is audible, can be heard, and he who has an ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. And when you receive a prophecy, like with words of knowledge, words of wisdom, words of teaching, whatever the Lord gives you, whatever thought comes to your mind, you take every thought captive, you test it, you weigh it, you talk to God who's within you by the Holy Spirit, and you ask him, God, is this you? Is this what you are saying? 
And we need to, must, must understand the difference between the voice of Jesus Christ and the enemy. It is written, says Jesus. And the enemy also uses that phrase, it is written, quoting scripture in a pharisaical way in order to manipulate, intimidate, dominate and control. Now I'm giving you an overview of not just my nearly 39 years on this journey, the narrow way going to heaven, but also from Trevor's perspective. And Trevor's been on this journey 52 years. And of course, when you add to those years, the other people we know in our life, including my wife, the sum knowledge gained from different perspectives in the body of Christ on the same way to heaven, John 14, 6, Isaiah 35, there is one body of Christ, one remnant church, one holy nation that God himself has kept as a remnant for himself. So God himself, I cannot call God herself. That would be blasphemy. God is not a woman. We don't talk to Mary as the mother of God, because God has no mother. Yes, of course, Jesus was physically in the womb of Mary, the physical Mary contained in her physical womb, a physical baby, fully human. But of course, that baby was put into Mary's womb by God himself. And let's absolutely accept and understand, but accept it, Jesus was not created. The Spirit of Christ was not created because Jesus is God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And of course, we looked at the Godhead today in the church meeting that we attended, in the church building, in a church service, in a church meeting, organized by church ministers. And the subject was the Trinity. But of course, you know and I know that word doesn't exist in the Bible. It's a phrase that's been coined by modern man to describe three. And God is not three. God is one. God is one. But we know him, him, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yahweh, Yeshua Messiah, and He, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, He will guide us into all truth. He is the counselor. And I know my emphasis on He, Himself, Him, jars with the, the spirit of feminism. And that is a, a spirit of this world that is as perverse and evil as chauvinism. And I speak as someone who was a chauvinist and part of the arch chauvinist religion called Freemasons. And Freemasonry is as chauvinistic as any religion is and can be. It is literally a men only club, a religious club, a men's club, a spiritual club, a false religion, a false brotherhood, and it is a charity of good works. And it's legalistic. The rules are there, and you cannot break the rules. The ceremonies are, are fixed, and you have to play your part. And you have to say your lines. And you cannot deviate from the, the lines, the script. 
So Freemasonry is a false chauvinistic religious club for men. But of course, I don't know whether feminists have their own clubs, their official clubs for women only. I don't know. I know the, the Freemasons, the women have their own Freemasonry. And the men don't recognize the women. And the women don't recognize the men. But we're talking about the religious occultic practices of chauvinism and feminism. So it's not surprising that the spirit of this age, one of the prevailing spirits of this age, is feminism. And the women are in ascendancy. And men have been emasculated progressively for decades. From 1980 to 1979, when Margaret Thatcher rose to become Prime Minister of the UK, things started to change. And certain church groups, which traditionally have understood that elders, bishops are men, they started to accept women into leadership in the terms of equality. Because if Margaret Thatcher was the prime minister, women reasoned, why couldn't women have roles of authority in the Christian church? Well, of course, ever since that has happened. Women do take the roles of authority, not just as ministers, but as bishops. And now, of course, you, you know what I'm saying is true. There are female bishops in denominations, including the Church of England, where the female bishops are already in line to become the first female archbishop of the Church of England. And they see it as no different to the world. And in that sense, they are absolutely right. The pattern of this world is how the institutional churches are governed exactly according to the pattern of this world exactly the same pattern of worldly organizations is exactly how denominations are formed founded institutionalized with a constitution articles of association registered usually as a charity and it the company organization comes into being and it is registered in every state government run country according to the laws of that country and that is the status quo and of course you cannot change the status quo because the status quo is what it is status quo the state of being is what it is and the truth is, if you don't want to change your view of Christianity, then you won't change your view of Christianity. If you don't want to come to the feet of Jesus Christ and ask him to be Lord of your life, to repent, to humble yourself and to ask him, Jesus, God, to forgive you. Because Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. There is no mother God. The Holy Spirit is not she. That is a blasphemy. It's an error of scripture, false doctrine, and an, a blasphemy against God. Because Jesus called the Holy Spirit him, and there's no contention about that. If you don't know the Holy Spirit to be He, the Counselor, He, the Instructor, then I don't know what spirit you have in your life, but it's not God. God doesn't disagree with God. The Father and the Son are one. And the Father and the Son sent the Holy Spirit, poured out on all flesh, on everyone. All they have to do is humble themselves and just ask God 
lead me by the Holy Spirit today. I said that to somebody today. After the, quotes church service, I spoke to some people and I explained to one person about the Holy Spirit. And he, the Holy Spirit, points the way to Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the Lamb of God who was slain for me, to pay the price for me and my sins, to show me the way. The Holy Spirit shows me Jesus. Jesus leads me to the Father. But God is one, not a trinity. That's a confusion right there. God is not three. God is one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Yahweh. Yeshua, Messiah. And all the names of God. Light, truth, love, counselor, instructor, advisor, mighty God, everlasting Father. Saviour, King, Lord of above all lords, the Judge, the Bridegroom. God is not three, and God is not 33, God is not 333, God is one. But there are many names and understanding of who God is. God is truth, truth in love. So we're going to close it now. Pray with me. And we, we're starting to see the flock is dividing between sheep and goats. And that includes shepherds and goat herds. But do bear in mind that Jesus Christ is the shepherd. And that the roles and functions of ministry titles, they're not titles. They are what they are, roles and functions within the body of Christ. But please don't misunderstand that you think you're a teacher because God is the teacher, the Holy Spirit is the teacher. And if he is using you to bring any sense of teaching, bear in mind that that is a spiritual gift. Teaching itself is a spiritual gift. And no one owns the gifts of God. God uses us. He gives us what to say. The Holy Spirit is in us. And, and, and uh, we, I've been talking about it recently. Take captive every thought. Prophecies that come to your mind. Take them captive. Words of wisdom. Take them captive. Words of teaching. To bring correction to people. Take those captive. God reminded me today that well-known Christian cliche, it's a cliche really, eat the fish and spit out the bones. It's been around for decades and it's a trite term and it stops the conversation. Once you understand the bones are areas of contention then you do need to spit the bones out and realize that those who are eating the meat we're not interested in the bones at all in the sense we're not going to quarrel and fight and argue with other people because that is an addiction in certain people and they love arguing argumentativeness being argumentative it's a spirit that comes on certain people and they're like dogs fighting over bones but we're not dogs we're sheep we're people but we're sheep Christ is the shepherd so God is Father Son and Holy Spirit and he the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth he is like a mother hen but he's not a mother the disciples are like a mother, but we're not a mother, and we're not the father either. We're brothers and sisters, but Christ is in us to help us individually and through us to help those around us in our twos and threes and so forth. Pray for us as we're praying for you. God bless you, brethren of the one God.
Keep in touch, one day of salvation at a time. God bless you.